I'm Firefighter Thies, and you're watching Report on Conditions. This week, we're at base camp for the Rabbit Fire, and we will take you to several large vegetation fires that have occurred in the past week. Hi, I'm Maggie Klein de la Rosa. Thank you for joining Cal Fire Riverside County Fire Department's Report on Conditions. For the past week, from July 10th to July 16th, our firefighters responded to 3,892 calls for service, including 2,897 medical emergencies and 199 fire-related calls. Of the fire calls, 87 were vegetation fires and 25 were structure fires. Let's check out a few highlighted incidents from last week. On Friday, July 14th, around 1 p.m., 911 dispatchers received multiple reports of a fire in the 9,400 block of Retchy Canyon Road, north of Moreno Valley. The first engine responding had visual on a large column of smoke and immediately requested a large augmentation of resources. Once they arrived on scene, the engine company officer advised five to seven acres of flashy fuels were burning with the potential of several hundred more acres. The first arriving battalion chief requested an additional 10 engines due to an immediate structure threat and requested to start evacuations. Fire resources went into unified command with Riverside County Sheriff's Office and the forward spread of the fire was stopped at 7.24 p.m. Firefighters remained on scene for several days, strengthening the containment line. In total, the fire burned 437 acres and destroyed one structure. On Friday, July 14th, around three in the afternoon, firefighters responded to multiple reports of grass on fire near the intersection of South Highland Springs Avenue and Breckenridge at the boundary of Beaumont and Banning. The first on-scene engine reported five acres of grass and thick brush burning at a critical rate with potential for 500 acres and requested multiple additional engines and aircraft to assist. Due to the immediate life safety threat of a large retirement community, multiple air tankers were ordered while the Banning Police Department worked to evacuate residents. Southern California Edison responded and shut off the power to the high voltage lines in the area. Thankfully, firefighters in the air and on the ground were able to stop the forward progression of the fire at 6.42 p.m. Evacuations were lifted as of 9 p.m. Two firefighters were transported to a local area hospital for evaluation of minor injuries that they sustained. 105 acres total were burned, and firefighters remained on scene overnight to finish putting in containment lines and do heavy overhaul. Also on Friday, July 14th at 3.30 in the afternoon, firefighters were dispatched to multiple reports of a hillside on fire near the intersection of Gilman Springs Road and Jack Rabbit Trail in Lakeview. The first on-scene engine reported several acres of heavy brush burning in steep terrain and requested multiple additional air and ground resources, including an immediate need for 25 fire engines. Over the course of the next several days, the Rabbit Fire burned in a northeast direction towards the city of Beaumont. Evacuation orders and warnings were put in place for several neighborhoods, including the Aspen Creek community. Fire engines and crews from across the state and several cooperating agencies came to assist in the firefight. As of this airing, the fire is 8,283 acres. Our firefighters remain committed to the incident, mopping up and strengthening containment lines. Thankfully, no structures or critical infrastructure have been destroyed. One civilian suffered moderate injuries and was transported to a hospital via ground ambulance for treatment. No other injuries were reported. Our last highlighted incident of the week occurred on Saturday, July 15th, around 3.30 p.m. Firefighters responded to multiple 911 calls reporting grass on fire in the area of Gavilan Road and Ida Leona Road in unincorporated Paris. The first engine to arrive on scene reported one acre of light flashy fuels burning with a potential for 500 acres. A large evacuation order area was set up for multiple neighborhoods around the fire. The incident commander requested 20 additional engines, while the air resources asked for a very large air tanker and additional water dropping helicopters. By 7.15 p.m., the fire had reached 250 acres and was 25% contained. The evacuation order was reduced to an evacuation warning at around 8 p.m. as the firefighters got the forward rate of the fire stopped. The fire is 338 acres and resources remain on scene tying in containment lines. One firefighter with a minor injury was transported to an area hospital for treatment. Engine 9, set up for structure protection at Good Peak Road. I'm Bill Weiser. I'm the fire chief here at Riverside County Fire Department in the Cal Fire Riverside Unit. I'm here to remind all of our homeowners 
that we had a bit of rain this year, and that means our annual grass crop is thicker than we've seen over the last few. Please, let's work early at getting clearances around our home so your family's safe, my firefighters are safe. And for questions or instructions on being able to do that, visit our website at rvcfire.org. We understand the urgency in getting timely and accurate information on emergency incidents and disasters to our residents and visitors. Riverside County Public Safety Agencies have several methods of dispersing information on a targeted or broad scale through our call centers, social media platforms, and the Alert Rivco Emergency Messaging System. Let's learn more about the Alert Rivco Messaging System and evacuations from our partners at the Riverside County Emergency Management Department and the Riverside County Sheriff's Office. An important step for your preparedness for fires, floods, or really any emergency is to sign up for your local alerting system. In Riverside County, we use Alert Rivco. The Alert Rivco system is used by public safety agencies to let the public know as quickly as possible that there's something going on that requires action. That may be evacuating, it could be sheltering in place, or even notifying people that evacuations may become necessary so that they can prepare in advance. The Riverside County Sheriff's Department wanted to share the differences in evacuation warnings and evacuation orders so you can be better prepared in case there's a fire, flood, or other emergency in your area. An evacuation warning means that there's potential threat to life and or property. If you require additional time to evacuate because of medical needs, pets, or livestock, this would be the time for you to leave. Residents at Main Street and First Street, this is a lawful evacuation order. An evacuation order means there's an immediate threat to life and you must go now. The area will be lawfully closed to public access, so take everything with you, such as medication, important papers, and pet needs, as you won't be allowed back into the area until the order is lifted. A shelter-in-place order means for you to go inside and to shut all your doors and all your windows and to remain inside until further direction from emergency personnel. We think it's important for residents to heed all evacuation warnings and orders to be better assist first responders in protecting lives and property. Everyone wants to know when they can return home after evacuation, and the answer to that is always as soon as it is safe to do so. For your safety and the safety of first responders, many factors are taken into consideration and constantly re-evaluated before an evacuation order is lifted, such as are utilities secure, are the roadways clear, is there a threat of future danger? Just because you don't see smoke or floodwaters have receded does not mean danger does not exist. Our goal is to get evacuation orders and warnings lifted as soon as possible. Stay informed, be ready, act quickly. One of the best ways you can protect your loved ones is to have an evacuation plan, an evacuation kit, and to leave early so first responders and equipment can get into the area of concern quickly to mitigate any threats. To sign up for Alert Rivco Messaging in Riverside County, visit www.rivcoready.org slash alert Rivco. Help us to help you keep your loved ones safe. Good morning, guys. My name is Michael Bailey. I'm with Congressman Raul Reese's office in California's 25th Congressional District. Today I'm out here with the ladies and gentlemen of Cal Fire and everybody working the Rabbit Fire the Ricci Fire, and the Island Fire. We presented a flag that was flown over the Capitals today to show the honor and respect that we have for the dedication of everybody that is currently fighting the fires here and throughout California. The office appreciates all of your hard work and all of your dedication. Thank you guys. Keep up the fight. Yeah, I got eyes on it right now. I'll bring it that way. We'd like to give this week's shout out to all the firefighters who battled the numerous wildland fires throughout the county since last Friday. As firefighters work all day and night to reach full containment, you'll hear the term mopping up. This refers to firefighters building and strengthening existing containment lines, removing burning material in the fire area, and cutting down the fire damaged trees and cooling ash pits. Mopping up minimizes the chance of a fire spreading into nearby unburned areas. While the mop-up phase continues, local utility companies and Caltrans are hard at work repairing our valuable infrastructure, including things like damaged power lines and roadways. Fantastic work to everyone out there. That's it for this week's Report on Conditions. Be sure to follow at CalFireRRU on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook to stay up to date on incidents as they happen. 
Did you happen to capture any pictures or videos of our firefighters in action? If so, send them our way at rrupio at fire.ca.gov. This week, we end our report on conditions with a montage of amazing footage provided by our volunteer reserve photographers. Thank you.